Okay, so we'll continue with uh, our show. Um, so, um, the next talk is, called, is titled Nixos Assimilate. Um, to introduce our uh, long-time Nixos co contributor, um, I'll first start is how to pronounce his uh, nickname. Uh, it's, uh, if you are in Germany, in German speaking, uh, you will pronounce it Ashlik. Ashlik. Yeah, Ashlik. And then if you're English speaking, it's, you, yeah, the pronunciation correct is eight. Eight. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. Um, and it's actually a person that does not need to be introduced um, because you can just read its pull, uh, pull requests and commits and you will know everything you need to know about it. So, without no further ado. Yeah. Um, so uh, the the Nexus Assimilate um, issue was was open uh, like about uh, a year ago, since a year a year ago, and uh, so I decided to finally crunch it together, but uh, didn't manage to fully crunch it together right now. But uh, it's um, getting there next week, and uh, it's actually a system which is uh, comprised of actually three parts and two major parts. One is the partitioner. This which is next part, and um, the other one is uh, a device mapper module, which uh, is um, well. I'll, I'll get to the to, to the second one in a minute. <laughs> so, um, so this is the boring part. Uh, it's just a partitioner. It's um, well, it's uh, using uh, it or Blivit. It's a it's a Python library for um, uh, for for doing partitioning in in a in a tree like um, manner. So so you have you have a device tree and you you um, build everything or every storage device on top of the device tree, and uh, so. Um, so far, how how this uh, it, it actually was in in NixOps, um, or it is actually used in NixOps, and uh, so far we we only had um, the, the way to to do manual partitioning, while, or, or if you if you want to um, to get NixOS on a on a um, on a machine that uh, where you don't have physical access to, you usually need to. Um, Need to, uh, yeah, either keep the existing partition layout or shrink one partition and do uh, and create another one and other things like that. And uh, for that, um, I usually uh, I initially introduced um, Nixpart to NixOps, and um, <laughs> this was actually a quick and dirty hack. It's um, it was uh, by monkey patching um, Blivit at that time um, from um, from getting rid of all the the um, uh, from all the dependencies on uh, Anaconda, which is uh, Blivit is is basically a library which is used for for, for, um, for the Red Hat's installer, which is called. Anaconda, and they they put uh, they separated the partitioning uh, stuff into uh, the Blivet library, and so uh, the code. If if you want to see it, I can show it <laughs> to you. It's it's monkey patching, but um, yeah. Um, so we're heading towards uh, next part 1.0, which is basically. Yeah, uh, th this is um, this is uh, the old format which is using. Uh, this is what what um, the Hetzner uh, deployment is actually using for partitioning. This is uh, the Kickstart um, format, which is quite mm, quite compressed, and we actually want uh, something more um, more, let's say, Nixos modular, which also has. One major downside, which is basically it's not so compressed. So um, this is the the um, the new uh, partitioning uh, or the new storage uh, 
attribute or that the the new storage attribute that will be introduced more or less in this way um, to Nix packages. Um, my plan is actually to, to have it side by side by file systems because I, I don't actually know what to do with file systems, whether to keep it or uh, actually uh, use just the storage definition to um, to statelessly uh, create uh, the, the, the partition or the, the partition and file system layout. Um, the problem here actually is um, that you see, um, I think it's uh, yeah, yeah, uh, VDA and VDB, and that's uh, the the problem where where you uh, actually um, either have to to specify device IDs or introduce labels or some other ways to um, to manage the state or to to actually if if you for example uh, add another disk you. Uh, might uh, e e e the the next system is unable to mount the disks because uh, it will just say well uh, VDA or SDA could be in any order. So um, yeah, this is actually a small demo of, of um, the next part um, implementation. Bigger, bigger pardon? Larger. Um, that's <laughs> that's actually in QEMO. Uh, if. Uh, hmm. That's uh, um. <laughs> uh well maybe it doesn't doesn't support it yeah. Ah, okay. <laughs> anyway, is is it now readable? <laughs> um So this is actually a uh, <laughs> It's actually a, a quite simple storage configuration with uh, with uh, ButterFS and uh, the the uh, existing file system layout is um, uh, is uh, actually un unpartitioned and uh, so we we um, we call the the next part. Um, uh, the Nix part itself is called by by uh, uh, is using Nix uh, instantiate to actually evaluate the expression, um, which is uh, and um, dumps it into XML, which is uh, which is more or less uh, Nix Nix instantiate ma minus minus or dash dash XML and. Uh, uh, and uses that uh, for for uh, creating it, its device tree. So uh, we should have ButterFS, and oh well, <laughs> that's a buggy version. Version anyway, but uh, it should work. Uh, Yeah, so we can mount um, <sighs> 
yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway, I think uh, that's uh, that's uh, the reason why it's why it's more or less boring because it's well, it's a partition. Uh, what do you expect? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, shut down. Nah. So, um, <laughs> now it's get it's getting quite interesting because So, um, yeah, yeah. The, as as I mentioned already, it's uh, it's uh, the question whether to keep file systems as a low-level attribute or not, because actually, a file system itself is is. Um, more or less creating mount units by creating uh, an FS tab and then uh, using the converter for 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 the uh, for the um, for the system the uh, mount units and uh, this actually has a few drawbacks for example if you uh, if you have um, network file systems or m multiple volumes and uh, things like that uh, you probably want to have proper mount units for them and also um, if you want for example to, uh, to change your partitioning layout um, you have to have uh, the 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 original input, like uh, yeah, there I have uh, a Lux container and an LVM in it, and uh, and uh, whatever you you want to to uh, to box into that whole chain, and um, yeah, so basically, uh, basically. Um, I would go for a stateless approach. Right now, it's it's um, uh, right now how we do it in the Hetzner target. It's like do the partitioning and afterwards uh, uh, spit out a Nix expression, which is uh, which is um, the the uh, which contains all the file system and uh, swap and whatnot uh, attributes. So. Um, this is uh, now we are getting to what's something that's uh, well a bit more complicated. So uh, having having an, an, a petitioner is is quite boring, but the interesting thing is uh, well <laughs> we can assimilate basically every OS more or less. So. Um, which is basically, and now now we're we're getting to the to the interesting part because I don't have any um, nice and graphical slides here. Um, uh, Next, as assimilate is basically a device mapper module that, or should be a device mapper module once it's working correctly, um, which ha which basically works in. Um, three steps and yeah and uh, yeah let's let's get to the steps and uh, this is um, the first step is actually marking everything that's um, it, it, so so you 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 have the old partitioning layout you you mount everything read only and read all data you want to still keep so it's marking every block that's um, that's basically used and uh, that has the advantage that we can figure out which one or which part of, of the disk is not used or you don't want to keep so for example if you if you just uh, which is quite common if you just want to keep the next store um, if you want to go from 
let's say Windows to NixOS or <laughs> Debian to NixOS and uh, change the partitioning layout. It's uh, basically um, you, uh, yeah, you keep um, you want to keep just the Nix store. And uh, there, uh, so so far there has uh, there have been other um, other approaches towards this, like um, yeah, like like um, pulling up an image and uh, and and uh, trying to root from from a particular image and uh, and other. I would consider them hacks like that. And even the, the Hetzner one is a hack because we, we rely on the rescue system and we can't simply say, well, uh, we are already on the system, let's assimilate this one. And it's doing a k-exec or reboot into a, into a kernel with, uh, with a special init RD and the device mapper module. And uh, we are uh, getting to th those three phases. So, uh, once we have marked everything, um, we get to phase two, which is uh, we are writing the new partition table in the unused portions of uh, the disk, so the, the ones you obviously don't want to keep. So, in theory, I haven't th uh, thorough, uh, thoroughly tested this, this should work with all file systems, like um, if you... Um, it, they they shouldn't normally uh, do something. Well, let's read at a random location on the disk. I hope. <laughs> and um, yeah, um, and everything. And, and uh, this uh, the the right phase um, it does it does have another table which uh, which marks everything or which tracks everything that has been written and uh, also the offsets to or the 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 block uh, um, offsets of where it or where it usually should be this this is something a device mapper already has you could you can um basically um yeah, remap every block on the disk to every virt virtual address um yeah and the last one is uh, the remap part which is uh, uh simply doing everything in reverse like uh yeah write everything to the to the locations where they should be which um is not so so uh well we we have to consider the order of a big big because if we um if we uh, write uh if we if we have a marked block in the from from the second phase which um which then will, uh, which corresponds to the phys to the new physical location. Uh, we actually will overwrite ourselves with ourselves, which is uh, could be quite interesting in the end. So actually, um, those three phases should get us to to the point where we can um, seamlessly, or more or less seamlessly, if we have something like rollback. <laughs> Um, which is yeah, um, which we ha if if we have something like uh, rollbacks, it could be actually safe. I mean, uh, theoretically, my my uh, goal was to hey, does somebody have a laptop he wants to migrate to another partitioning scheme? Let's test it. <laughs> uh, well. <laughs> Huh? Beg your pardon? I hope, I hope everybody's going to beg it. So, um, yeah, so, so the, the, the problem here is uh, that if we, if we want to have rollback, we, have, uh, we can't do this on a disk that's more than uh, half of, of uh, yeah, that's allocated more than half of its size. So, uh, we could do some workarounds like 
du deduplicate stuff and uh, compress stuff, but uh, that that will be something for future optimizations. But right now, um, the, the my initial goal is, or my 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 my, my short term goal is to make this uh, actually um, destructive. In, in terms of just keep the next door and uh, we don't care about rollback, uh, at least um, in, the, in the first stage. Uh, this is particularly uh, useful for, um, for uh, hosting providers. So, so you usually, um, like, like Hetzner and many more, uh, you, you get... Um, you get um, a server somewhere, a physical server, or maybe a VM. Well, there could, there could be a drawback, for example, if you can't change the kernel. But uh, if you if you get a physical machine, um, you, you usually uh, for for most of these hosts, or you hosts, you don't get hardware access. So you can't run in there with a with a USB stick and just plug it in, uh, install NixOS on it, and that's it. But uh, but they usually come with uh, pre-installed whatever, yeah, and um, most of them have rescue systems, but not all of them. And so this is um, an actual solution for for having um, more or having basically a generic ba backend for uh, Nix ops, which is. Um, yeah, you just point it to some host. You ju you just just need to have SSH access, and that's everything you need to have. And you just say, well, I need this partitioning layout, like like uh, uh, shown before, and um, yeah, and this NixOS configuration, which is the same the same configuration, or that at least that's the goal. So you just have your storage def definition and uh, in your NixOS config, and you're you're basically doing doing the same as uh, as you, as you would have NixOS install with uh, a config file where it would be uh, would do partitioning. Uh, just you're doing NixOS assimilate instead. So NixOS install is for live. Uh, for for uh, for live booted uh, USB sticks or a live for a live image and uh, Nexus Assimilate is for live systems basically. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. The uh, one advantage uh, is. Um, because I, I I thought about doing this uh, by by streaming the the um, the closures via network, but this is um, quite uh, uh, quite unreliable. Um, and also the 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 partitioning remapper. Uh, has has the advantage that we uh, we basically just need the RAM uh, to start Nix part and that's it. And maybe if you have more RAM, then you have more disk cache, uh, which also gives a, a bit uh, per performance improvement. Uh, but uh, it it won't um, it won't be a deal breaker for for everything. So um, yeah, and. What I, what I said already, NixOS install and the, the config, that would be everything for future NixOS installs. So, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, encryption is, is one thing which isn't such a big problem. You, you, you just need to do, uh, for example, if you want to, to randomize the data first and do your, 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 uh, Lux containers or whatever, uh, or, uh, uh, the encrypt um, on on top of it, um, and then you could uh, then because we already know the unallocated unalloc sectors, we can just write random random data in it, and we're done. And um, yeah, and if you have something like like a spare drive or anything, we could. 
uh, we could use that as well to, to speed things up because so so we can we can uh, if we have enough uh, uh, space on there we, we can basically skip the second step and uh, yeah and just copy over uh, and just copy everything to the to the uh, right location yeah that's basically it and uh, yeah um, I will push the the code. Um, I guess, uh, yeah, starting on, on next week uh, for for the no, new implementation, and uh, also try to to get uh, the kernel module running. But uh, no promises here. Please don't clap. No. Okay, we have quite some time for questions, so please. Okay, uh, so on something like a Hessen environment, hmm? uh, what is the advantage of this compared to starting from a rescue system? Uh, the advantage is, um, well, for, for Hetzner, no, you... you um, you basically have no big advantage because, um, apart, well, you have the advantage that, that, that you have a better partitioner, yeah, which is next part. And, um, but, uh, it doesn't solve anything new for, for, for the, for the Hetzner target. It's actually, um, it's actually more useful for adding new targets. Okay, and then maybe a small second question. Do you think it would make sense to get Nix part into mainline Nix source? That, that's that's the goal, basically. So there is already the, the uh, branch um, on on uh, Nix packages which has these uh, changes for the storage attributes, and um, yeah, but they are still sub subject uh, to change. And maybe if people disagree, so, oh no, we don't want it that way. Or, yeah. So I have a question and a note. Um, I'll start with a note. Um, OpenStack uh, has a module called Irony um, for doing bare metal deployments, um, including doing Pixie Boot and IPMI for being able to get access into the bare metal for doing these kind of partitioning things. Um, the question I have, uh, I, a bit confused still how you determine the reachability of a sector to, to, to be able to separate the live sectors from the, the unused sectors. Um, by, by having a device mapper module where, 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 um, which I use instead of the real physical disk device. And uh, via the device mapper module, I'm, I'm able to, to uh, get all accesses from uh, I'm basically mounting the the the, the volume and uh, doing a read of all files I want to to uh, I want to keep and uh, and at the same time at, at the module level I get uh, the the file extents any more questions Uh, it's not completely clear to me how uh, this is going to be used uh, after conversion because file systems usually have something like reference counts and checksums and so on. And when you just preserve some blocks of a file system and clear out the other blocks, how is this going to work? Um, yeah, well, that, that's uh, that, that uh, what I was already mentioning. If there would be a read which is random, or yeah, I, I, I don't know any file system which does random reads, but uh, that would be a problem. But but otherwise, if you read, uh, if you um, if you're doing a, a complete read of of all the files you you want to keep. It, at least in theory, it should be deterministic in in that sense that um, everything uh, that the file system driver is going to read will be um, the same as as uh, yeah as uh, as uh, if we do it with a with a second uh, operation read operation on on the same um, volume. Basically, we we don't read write mount the volume. 
Okay, uh, then we perhaps have to go a step back. Uh, it's not completely clear to me what you're trying to achieve. Um, so uh, let me try to paraphrase it. You um, are reading a portion of an existing file system, then you're going to clear out the rest and create a new file system with only that portion that is going to be retained, right? Yeah, yeah. Um Yeah, yeah, of course. You, you're copying the, the, you're creating the new file systems and um, and uh, copying ev everything over to the new file system and then switch back everything over the, the, the old one or remap everything on top of the old one. That more clear. <laughs> I, I try to do it in uh, more or less. Let's say this is. Uh, let's say this is a disk which, is, which has uh, these allocated blocks and um, we are going to, um, we're basically, we, uh, well, the, the file system has more blocks in it, let's say we have um, blocks for, for files we are not interested in. So in, in, in uh, phase two, we are um, basically writing stuff in there. And so we, we um, uh, which are the, the, the blocks that usually come, uh, need to come, uh, 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 are in, in, a, in a totally different order. And in the third phase, we basically do, um, eh. okay. uh. This is uh, the remap step. So we, we, we have, uh, yeah. So there shouldn't be anything left from the first step. That, uh, that's, uh, of course, without uh, the, the option to roll back. Is that more clear? <laughs> Uh, I guess this is a talk a bit maybe for after coffee or for lunch, right? Uh, but uh, one more question. So I think I kind of understood what you meant, which is like you mark all the blocks to access all the files that you want to keep. And yeah, all the all the raw data. Yeah. So, for example, if I need something in slash nick slash store, I will mark slash, I will mark nick, I, I, nick, I will mark store, I will mark the path in, within the nick store. And well, I you, you just read path. you just read the file, and uh, the the file system underneath it will say, well, uh, I need to read this B tree and uh, this block and whatever, and that's where the module comes in because at that level we, we are in, intercepting uh, what is going to be read. Okay. And when you rewrite in the second step, um, the, the, uh, not, uh, the, the files to the non-marked blocks, um, will you take care that um, 
parts belong together, like like big files could be more than a gigabyte, um, go to the same uh, coherence block, or is it completely wurscht? <laughs> Because you write everything together in the end. Well, it doesn't matter because we are operating on the block level. Okay. We don't know different things and different things are done So, but, but you. But you don't, you don't change the order of blocks. So, you can, so when you write everything in, in one line in the end, it will come out as this, the big file is still in one. Mm. Can you be sure that that one file is always uh, yeah, in the same consistency? If if nothing, uh, okay. Um, we'll do a bit longer break. Um, I guess it's uh, we can now have time for some extra coffee. Um, we start at twelve fifteen. Um, let me just double verify. Yeah, 12.15. So we have uh, 20 minutes, a bit more, uh, 25 minutes uh, of break. And yeah, thank you.